Hello everybody and welcome to Pink Peppermint Cards YouTube channel. My name is Elaine. Thank you for joining me today. If you've been here before, thank you and welcome back. If you're new, I'm excited to have you here and thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoy this video. Today I'm going to be sharing a video tutorial using products from Time for Tea Designs. These products were released in April and I'm excited to share a card using the Unicorns stamp set and I'm going to be making a really cute sparkly shaker card. So let's jump in. So I've got a pre-made white card base here. The finished card size will measure five inches by five inches. I'm just scoring and pressing that down so we get a nice crisp edge. And I'm going to be using the square quilted nesting dies. These, I believe, were from the March release. So fairly new and really lovely sizes. But for today's video, I'm using the fourth and fifth largest size in the set. And I'm going to be using these to create myself a frame. Normally, they just would cut a square rectangle with stitching got a lot of variety there with different sizes but I'm going to have a nice frame going around the edge and this is going to help me create my shaker element so I'm just going to take some more heavyweight white cardstock and I'm using some washi tape to just secure those dies together just so they don't move when I run it through the die cut machine so I've just set that aside and I'm also now going to be creating myself a nice sky background so the new stencil is called seen it and it gives you loads of lovely options, but for today's card, I'm only gonna be using the cloudy edges. You can see that they're all the way around the edge. I'm using some washi tape to secure my stencil down to my glass media mat. And I'm just very gently going to blend on some chipped sapphire. It's got a really nice purpley hue to it. And I just thought that this was a really nice color for my sky. So I'm just really slowly going to be blending on clouds all the way from the top to the bottom. So I've turned my stencil and again securing down with some washi tape and I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing over and over. Just turning my stencil as I go to get a really nice variation of clouds. You will notice that I just cover up the edges with the washi tape. So that I don't get any sort of grass effect or you could also cover up that centerpiece where the sun rays are and as I just work my way down just needed to secure that down with my hand a little so it doesn't move too much and just finishing off at the bottom there with a little bit more ink and that is the background of my scene completed and now I can move on to just securing my frames together so I did cut two just to make my frame really nice and sturdy and I'm just using to use some liquid adhesive to secure those together and once they are nicely secured down I'm going to be popping some double-sided adhesive on the back so I'll have the top facing down onto my glass media mat and I'm just going to pop some of this double-sided adhesive all on the back of my frame and this is going to secure my piece of acetate to that frame. So I just like to run my bone folder over that. I just find if you press it down nice and firm, the release papers are easier to pull up. So just go all the way around the edge of my frame. I've already pre-cut some acetate to size. So I'm just gonna lay that on top of that adhesive, smoothing it down nicely and I didn't get it completely lined up perfectly but I'm just going to trim that edge off and I hadn't got any foam tape to the size of my frame so I just have some foam tape here stuck to some I think it was label paper and then I just use my craft knife just to cut myself some strips of foam tape that are just the right width so I just need to make sure that I go all the way around, making sure there's no gaps. We don't want any of our lovely sequins to be falling out. So I just go all the way around the edge, just trimming things off with my knife. And so that my sequins don't stick to the edges, I'm just running my embossing buddy around the edge of that foam tape, just to remove any stickiness. I also pop a little bit all over my panel, which has now dried. And I can start adding in my nice sparkles. So I've got some clear 
sequins here. I've got some glitter, some chunky glitter and some pretty purple stars. Now I can just go around the edge of my frame, just removing all of that foam tape release paper. And then I can very carefully line up my frame onto my panel. And once I'm happy with how it looks, I want to get that nice and even as if I can. I can press everything down firmly to make sure that my sequins aren't going to fall out. And give it a little shake. And that is the first part of my shaker element done. Make sure they all move around nicely. And I can just set that aside while I grab my card panel and I can secure that down. I will leave measurements for my card panel. I did trim it slightly smaller than my card base, so I'll leave measurements for that down in the description box below. I think it looks nice with a little border around the edge. So I can set that aside while I work on my elements. So this is Unicorn in Training. This is new for April, and it's such an amazing set. It's got so many lovely elements in it. Absolutely adorable. I've got some Copic friendly cardstock in my Misty and I'm using my Mento Tuxedo Black Ink. Uh, I do stamp out my uh, stamp out my stamps a couple of times, especially because they're new. So once I've done that a couple of times, this then start colouring in with my Copic markers. So I've chosen these colours based on those lovely pretty purpley stars that are in my shaker mix. The colours I've used are listed on the screen and they will also be in the description box below and on the coordinating blog post which will be linked below. And I'm just going to colour in my rainbow here. I have sped the video up quite considerably but it really didn't take me too long to colour this these two little images today. I'm going to give my little horn matching to the rainbow. And then I really love these B markers. They have a really nice purpley tone to them, even though they're in the B family. I think they're a lovely, lovely colour. I'm going to colour in the mane and his tail. It can be quite difficult to blend that B60 and B63, so I do have to work at that a little bit, but if you slow and take your time, it will blend eventually. And I'm just going to use some C markers to make my white unicorn just have some shading. So it looks nice and round and plump. Just using my zero marker to correct any mistakes. A little bit of shading for the cloud. And then I just, just go in around the edge of my unicorn with my C marker just to help things pop. And these are the coordinating dies to the set. So just gonna secure these down with some washi tape. And then I can run those through my die cut machine. This is going to be my sentiment. I decided to use some vellum for my sentiment. So this is the really nice scripty unicorn and then I've paired it with the in training. I've got my embossing buddy out again. I'm going to be heat setting this with some embossing powder. So I've got my Versamark ink. It's going to press that down firmly. I did do it a couple of times. My U didn't stamp out as neatly and as securely as I wanted. So just went over that. And this is liquid gold, no, liquid platinum embossing powder from Ranger. And I didn't show me heat embossing that because it was quite tricky because it was quite flimsy. But if you've got some tweezers, that will really help when you're heat setting your embossing powder. I'm just running a little bit of my glue pen onto my clouds, just in little sort of C shapes with a glue pen. And then I'm just popping some glitter on top just to give my clouds a bit of shimmer. And I also went ahead and coloured in a couple of little hearts because I needed to have some way of securing my vellum to my card and I didn't want the glue to show through. So I just quickly coloured in these hearts, same colours as before, RV66 and 63. Popped a little bit of glue on that vellum 
and then I'm just going to let that dry for a couple of minutes then flip it over and then pop the glue behind those hearts and then that will hide the glue as I secure it to my card. I'm just using my tweezers there and my fingers just to press down. Make sure everything's secure and lined up nicely. That is the beauty of using liquid adhesive. There's a little bit of wiggle room. Then I can go ahead and pop some more liquid adhesive on the back of my unicorn. And these are going to get secured directly to the acetate. So I've laid out my images to make sure that i am got enough room for everything and I'm happy with where they're placed. Now I can pop a little bit more glue on my rainbow. Just press that down and then I've got my Spectrum Noir Clear Sparkle Pen. A little bit more sparkle on the mane, the horn and the rainbow and his tail. Not, never too much sparkle, a little bit on the heart. And then as a final embellishment, I brought in my glossy accents to give my unicorn a glossy horn. And also just popped a little bit onto those hearts just to make them stand out and finish off the card. Did bring in my glaze pen just for the smaller elements on the card. And that is the card for my tutorial complete. I really hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed all of the new products that have released in April. You can find links to the products in the description box below and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.